Namaste everyone. Today I am going to talk of something very important. You know aspect of planet, right? But aspect, what is known as drishti, sight, how you look at something, is of multiple types. You know, Vedic astrology is specifically, I refer to Vedic astrology as Vedic astrology because it takes into consideration the concept of reality, karma, world, etc. from Vedas. From Vedas, Puranas and all of that also comes Hindu philosophy. And you know, Hindu philosophy or Indian philosophy is the most in-depth philosophy the world have ever produced. In that philosophy, which is the love for knowledge, everything is thought in depth. Same is with the aspect of planets also. We believe that planets are bodies, living beings. So we describe them, how they are, how they look and all of that. So the same is with aspect also. Aspects are also categorized into four areas. Number one is Urdu Mukhi Drishti, upward looking. That is Mars and Sun. Then there is downward looking Adhomukhi Drishti that is possessed by Saturn and Rahu. Then there is Triyak Mukhi Drishti looking sideways that is possessed by Mercury and Moon. And lastly it is Samadrishti looking in front normal aspect that is possessed by Jupiter and Venus. Now these different aspect of planets have their multiple uses in Dasha, Antar, Dasha, reading conjunctions and almost everything in Vedic Astrology, few of which I am going to touch in this particular video. But before we go on touching them, you should understand the basic fundamental behind how they work and what is the meaning. Once you have understood basic fundamental about anything, it becomes very easy to apply. So first of all, coming to Urdu Mukhi Drishti, looking upwards. What is upward looking? Thinking of future is upward looking. Like the condition that you are into right now, you are thinking of future. You are thinking of what is coming next. This is the particular reason that Sun and Mars should be considered significators of astrology. Because that is related to future. Not only future, anything that is related to prognostication. For example, even the planning that if we make a bridge here, how it will help the residents of this area, this is also future planning. This comes from planets having Urdu Mukhi Drishti looking upwards, Mars Sun. These aspects not only help you in predictions, but they also help you in, first of all, understanding planets. And secondarily, it also helps you in distinguishing the difference between the aspect of a planet versus conjunction of a planet. Right. So upward looking is thinking about future, but the downside of upward looking is person is not paying attention to his current scenario, not paying attention to what have happened before. So that is a downside. Right. Then comes downward looking. That is Saturn and Rahu. Downward looking is also past, right? Past is the down. So Saturn and Rahu are very much contemplative. They are not worried about future. They are not taking into consideration what is happening right now, but they are concerned about what have happened in back, what have happened before. So people living in past times, contemplating a lot, thinking about what have happened before, or what a good time I was having before, or what a bad time I was having before. Basically, people struck in past is indicated by Saturn and Rahu. Right? Along with this, all the things that comes from below the earth. Right? Ex excavating coal, iron, all these ores, minerals, vitamins, right? Laying the foundation of a building and all these things are also indicated by downward looking planets, Saturn and Rahu. This is the particular reason why, Ra why Saturn indicates oil, metals, etc. In the same line, the upward looking planets, Mars and Sun, does indicate things which happen in the sky also. Right? So being a pilot, air hostess, right, or anything related to flying, etc., comes under the department of Sun and Mars. For this particular reason, 
Sun signifies bird. Sun is the karaka for bird. Then sideways looking Mercury and moon. Now this Mercury and moon. See there is a work given to planet. Now when this work is given to planet, the upward looking planet Mars and Mars and Sun, what they will do? They will be thinking if I do this thing in the manner it is told, I will get this much money or this will happen to me, that will happen to me. They are into daydreaming. Saturn and Rahu are very much into past that according to my experience, will I be able to do that? So self-doubt, right? Struck in the past is the case. It is only Jupiter and Venus having some drishti who are neither optimistic about future, not struck in the past, but are completely focused on the work at hand so they can successfully do it. This is the particular reason Jupiter and Venus should be taken for success. That they indicate success, complete focus at the thing that they are doing. So high level of focus, high level of concentration, etc. is indicated by Jupiter and Venus. Now coming to Mercury and Moon who have sideward looking, they generally want to save themselves from responsibilities. So the point is, you know, for an example, you must have seen this thing that someone is given responsibility. But when they are given responsibility, they start looking here and there. <clears throat> like is someone else who can do this work? Why I am chosen? Why I am given? Right. So basically those people who don't want to do their work, who want to run away from their responsibilities or people who don't think they are capable people who want that others should do the hard work and i should only enjoy the good result is signified by moon and mercury not only this <clears throat> you know see like you someone have a spouse so focusing on the spouse is done by jupiter and venus for this particular reason, when Jupiter and Venus are aspecting, now Drishti is related to aspect. So when Jupiter and Venus are aspecting the seventh house, one is very loyal to their spouse because they are very much focused on their spouse. On the other hand, when Moon and Mercury are aspecting the seventh house or the seventh lord for that matter, in that particular scenario, person is looking sideways here and there. So that basically means person Though married is not focused at their spouse, but looking here and there, that will give birth to extramarital affair, cheating tendencies, etc. Not only this, you also see, it is generally said that if someone is lying to you, they cannot look into your eyes. So looking here and there and not looking into your eyes is also an indicative of that the person is hiding something, telling a lie. For this particular reason, moon and mercury does indicate lying also. Telling a lie. This should also be understood in this way that whichever house Mercury or Moon is aspecting in the horoscope, whichever planet Mercury or Moon is aspecting in the horoscope, something related to that house, something related to that planet was kept hidden to you. Whichever house or planet Jupiter and Venus are aspecting, you are completely focused in those areas of your life. So you say if Venus is influencing the 11th house, aspecting the 11th house, then person is completely 100% focused on earning money. Whichever house is influenced by Sun and Mars. Influence I am here taking as a synonym for aspecting. Whatever house is influenced by Sun and Mars, in those area, person is dreaming. That if I get money, I will do this. When I have freedom, I will do this and all of that thing. And whichever house is influenced by Saturn and Rahu in those areas, person is thinking about past, contemplating in the past, struck in a past experience. For this particular reason, when Mars, sorry, when Saturn or Rahu is influencing the seventh house, I generally give prediction that this person may have a relationship with someone. He or she desperately wanted to marry or was very much in love with someone, but not, was not able to marry. And now in marriage, because and because of an effect of the same, they will try to find their ex or they will try to find that person in the spouse, which will create difficulties in marriage. The difficulties of not being able to move on from a previous relationship haunts these people. And this is surprisingly very true when you look at horoscopes. 
right so this is how it should be understood when you think more about these aspects more and more deeper implications of these planets will come out to you and you will understand the horoscope in a better way now you have understood th this normal stuff now let's go a bit deeper into it the aspect of the lagna lot so first of all you have to see the planet aspecting the ascendant if there is no planet aspecting the ascendant then you go with the type of aspect the ascendant lord is having and that is generally the approach of the person also so people whose aspect whose ascendant is influenced by jupiter and venus they are generally focused at one area of life at one point of time so they are those people that sir i want to get married but only after i get a good job on the other hand people who have moon or mercury influencing their ascendant that is they aspecting the ascendant or being the ascendant lord in the order i have told you are generally the people that i am not successful in my profession because i don't have anyone to guide so let me get married and then my wife will guide me or the spouse will guide me kind of a stuff on the other hand when sun or mars are influencing the ascendant in that scenario person is always like when i will get a job i will do this when this will happen i will do this or and lastly ascendant influenced by saturn and rahu these are the people who are always contemplative of earlier this used to happen this way now things have changed now people have degraded this type of complaining attitude they have regarding rahu i think aspect of all other planets are very clear regarding rahu there can be some confusion in aspect so i take rahu aspecting 5th house 9th house and 12th house from his position and when i am saying rahu influences the 12th house this means if rahu is situated in the 7th house he is aspecting 6th house which is 12th house from the position of rahu right very clear now the same approach of aspect of planet you will also see working in the dasha antar dasha of planet so when the dasha antar dasha of sun and or sun or mars is going on the person is optimistic about future he is dreaming planning whatever is when the dasha of dasha antar dasha of saturn and rahu is going this person is struck in the past contemplating in the past repenting and all these things when there is dasha antar dasha of mercury and moon one will want to run away from the responsibilities they will try to focus on multiple things they will try to be multitaskers will try to manage a lot of things and when there will be the dasha of jupiter and venus this person will be completely 100% focused to one thing so high level of dedication focus devotion toward one particular area of life whatever is signified by these planets is seen in their dasha antar dasha the approach of the person also happens with respect to also changes with respect to the shanta the same thing as i have told you as you think more about these aspects hidden secrets of astrology will open in front of you so in the same scenario if mars or sun is connected to the 10th house the profession of the person is related to planning when saturn or rahu are connected to the 10th house the profession of the person is related to analysis that analyze why this product failed analyze that if this happened in the past what will happen in the future type of type of jobs the influence of mercury and moon over the 10th house will in, will generally indicate profession which are related to management of management of people management of things where you have to put your attention into everything so manage a lot of things that when a sideways looking and when jupiter and venus are connected to the 10th house generally the profession is related to that you are given complete responsibility of one area one department or one thing and to do it only to do it is your singular task so that is the particular reason why jupiter indicates profession such as teaching so generally in the matters of teaching the teacher is only for teaching other things management of students etc is not his department it is department of others so those professions which require single focus dedication devotion is indicated by jupiter and venus so in this particular way as per the aspect of these planets you can understand the nature of these planets and then you can see how they work in dasha antar dasha in the matters of profession in the matters of marriage etc 
right? When Sun or Mars is influencing the seventh house, person is always optimistic of that. If I will get, you know, if this uh, desire of mine gets fulfilled, I will do this with my spouse, that with my spouse, you know. So about Saturn Rahu, I have already told you about Mar, about uh, Mercury and Moon, I have already told you. When Jupiter or Venus are influencing the seventh house, I have already told you, people are singular focused, right? So this is how this works, right? I think the examples are very clear and there is no iota of doubt here. Now going to another point of it, just a little bit more deeper implication, right? This is regarding influence of planet over planets. And this sometimes become very confusing. So what happens, there is a horoscope. You say there is a horoscope. And the person whose horoscope it is, the person is suffering from some issue, you say. That issue you will see with respect to the sixth house. So once while analyzing a horoscope, what happens, the sixth lord is expected by Saturn. Where the person is not having disease related to Saturn. So they inquire why this is the case that though Saturn is influencing my sixth lord, I am not having any problem related to Saturn. This was because as per the aspect of planets, the aspect of sixth lord, a sixth lord was not getting expected by Saturn. So this is a secret in conjunctions also. So how to do it? One Rashi is of 30 degree divided into three parts. Zero degree to 10 degree is the upper part. That is influenced by sun and Mars only. 10 degree to 20 degree is the middle part. That is influenced by Mercury, Moon, Jupiter, Venus, all four of them. 20 degree to 30 degree is lowest part. That is influenced by only Rahu and Saturn. So for this person, what, what is happening? The sixth Lord was of 14 degrees. Now, because sixth Lord is of 14 degrees and Saturn is an Adhomukhi planet whose influence is only from 20, 10 de 20 degree to 30 degree, Saturn is not actually influencing the sixth Lord. And for this particular reason, there is no disease related to Saturn. So 80% of the time in astrology, the reason behind failed prediction is that you are not able to find the planet who is causing the event or who is causing the issue properly. So what can happen? A wrong analysis can happen. Now in this particular case, Saturn is not actually influencing the sixth lord, but someone who does not know the technique can predict that because Saturn is influencing the sixth lord, there will be disease in Saturn, Dasha, Antardasha, which will not come to pass. So you have to be very, very careful. For a particular example, take this horoscope. Here in this particular horoscope, you can see that Saturn is situated in the seventh house. And this Saturn may be aspecting this Jupiter or may not be aspecting this Jupiter. Now, if this, if you take this Saturn aspecting Jupiter, then it is the seventh Lord aspecting the twelfth Lord. That does mean the person will be fortunate after marriage. So, you know, more income after marriage, promotion, etc. after marriage should come to pass. This is the general result. But when you look closely, you will understand that Saturn is a downward looking planet. He influences 20 degree to 30 degree only and Jupiter is at 7 degrees. That means Jupiter is not getting the aspect of Saturn actually. And for this particular reason, the result of 7th Lord influencing the 9th Lord, the result of 8th Lord influencing the 9th Lord, the result of 7th Lord influencing the 6th Lord, the result of 8th Lord influencing the 6th Lord will not come to pass. For this particular reason, the person, because a connection between 8th house and 6th house will indicate hereditary disease. And because the aspect of Saturn is not actually over Jupiter, because of this particular reason, this person will not suffer from hereditary diseases at all. Right? So this particular way, it helps you in judging about conjunctions also. And if you don't take this principle into consideration, there is a very high chance 
that your prediction can become wrong alternatively sometimes what happens even after so you see mars is the karka for wood now the aspect of mars over the sixth lord is not actually there but still the person gets wound because sixth house also indicates wounds and if there is any malefic in the sixth house wounds and attacks can be there so here if you are unaware about this technique you can misjudge that because of mars this wounds etc is coming to the native and because the native is actually having wounds and accidents etc it will also feel that the result that you have predicted is true but then the problem will happen in the shantanaksha this is the particular reason that despite being told in the classics of astrology that whatever is the result of a planet that happens in the dashantar the shaft planet despite our sages clearly telling this many a times we see that the result of the planet what we suppose as a result of the planet does not actually happen as it is in the dashantar the shaft planet because our judgment is faulty so this should be kept into consideration otherwise there will be issues right there is one more point now this aspect so there is one more secret now you see your lagna is 3 degrees as in this case the ascendant is 3 degrees so every house is 3 degree now you know 3 degree falls in the first part urdumukhi part that can be only influenced by sun and mars so for this particular reason in the matters of the fifth house in this horoscope which is aspected by mars and jupiter both you can get confused that whether by the aspect of mars this person will be in engineering profession or by engineering education or by the aspect of jupiter this person will have biology related you say now in this scenario this technique will help you you understand that lagna is 3 degree so every house is 3 degree which is falling in the first part hence here the aspect of jupiter is not applicable the aspect of mars is more powerful the aspect of mars is actually hitting the house hence this person should get education in mars related field engineering iit iti and other mechanical fields this person will be educated in right so this is how it helps in predicting with respect to empty houses also 80% of the time what happens we see that there is a planet influencing a particular house but the result of the planet is not very prominent for this reason somehow in modern times looking at the aspect of planets over houses and deciding results based on that is almost in disuse right but this problem actually crept in because we are not taking into consideration this very important principle which should not be done which is wrong this restricts our abilities of prediction as an astrologer hence you should be careful about it now this aspect that i am talking about gets modification also there is because see the sight drishti is dependent on light so when a room is filled with light you can see things in that room when a room is dark you cannot see things in that room right so sun also influences the aspect simply put planets with planets in kendra to sun that means planet with sun planet in fourth to sun seventh to sun tenth to sun are downward looking planets in kendra to second house from sun that means planets in second house from sun fifth house from sun eighth house from sun and 11th house from sun are downward looking sorry back uh, samadrishti sideways looking and planets in kendra to 12th house to sun planets in 12th house to sun third house to sun sixth house to sun and ninth house to sun are upward looking so when you apply this principle also keep in mind that as per the planetary position from sun the planet will not be influencing one part but can be influencing two parts also 
right a planet will never influence all the three parts of the rashi a planet will never influence complete 30 degree of rashi but at maximum he can influence only 10 degrees of rashi when the natural sight when the natural angle of sight and the angle of sight from the sun is both same or maximum a planet can influence 20 degrees out of the 30 degrees of rashi this is when the natural sight of the planet versus the sight given by sun is different so taking this horoscope as an example horoscope venus rahu ketu because not ketu ketu is not having any aspect at all so saturn venus and rahu because they are in second to sun are also influencing in the middle section because they are also having sideward glance they are looking in the previous rashi they are looking sideways because sun is in previous rashi to them so they are they are they have tilted their head and looking on the other side also that where sun is so venus is already having a samadrishti influencing 10 degree to 20 degree so venus only have one influence 10 degree to 20 degree whereas saturn and rahu now their degree is not only from 20 degree to 30 degree span but because they are in second to sun and kendra to second to sun their influence is from 10 degree to 30 degree this complete 20 degrees mercury moon jupiter because they are in kendras to sun also have downward aspect planet in kendra to sun is also downward looking sun will only have one aspect of upward looking so for this particular reason, Mercury, Jupiter, Moon, all three of them are also influencing from 10 degrees to 30 degrees altogether. Mercury, Jupiter and Moon naturally influence from 10 degree to 20 degree and because they are in Kendra to Sun, they influence 20 degree to 30 degree also. And lastly, Mars. Now Mars is already an upward looking planet, influences from 0 degree to 10 degree. And it is in Kendra to the 12th house from Sun also. 12th house from Sun is Capricorn and he is in Kendra to Capricorn and Taurus. So Mars have no change in their aspect because being in Kendra to 12th house from Sun, he is upward looking and naturally also he is upward looking. So Mars is only influencing from 0 degree to 10 degrees. Right? So the change in aspect as per the sight or the light provided by the sun should also be taken into consideration before predicting and this way every planet can have minimum one type of sight maximum two types of sight but no planet will have maximum type of sight now in this principle which is firmly supported by classics and experience also you see there is no aspect mentioned for ketu generally also i don't take any aspect for ketu now some classics which I don't consider 100% authentic, have erroneously mentioned the site of Ketu also, which according to me does not work in practical experience and because it is not, it is not supported by the fundamental principles of Vedic astrology, the aspect of Ketu should not be considered, right? Because once again, as I have told you, if you say that planets are like living beings, then you also have to describe then you also have to describe what type of living beings they are, their nature, behavior, character, etc. In the same matter, if you say that planets have aspect, then you should also clarify the type of aspect, the details about the aspect, which I have done in this video. Thank you for watching it, and I am very sure that it must have added to your astrological learning. That is my prime purpose in all my courses and in all my videos and everything to enhance the astrological knowledge of the participants, right? Thank you.